Welcome everybody to the Other Canada Podcast. I'm your host, Ono Sinde, and today I'm joined by Jen Winter, the founder of Have a Nice Day Pilates Studio. You're in for a treat with this episode. We're talking about how she quit her job in the middle of the pandemic to pursue her dream of owning a studio, everything that comes with running a business, starting an on-demand platform for Pilates, and all the great stuff of actually how to scale a business within this space. It's going to be such a great episode. You're going to get a lot of out of this. You're going to learn how to run a business, uh, be inspired, be healthy, and all that good stuff. And also, we want to thank our sponsor, BDC, for sponsoring this episode and everything that they're doing to support our platform. And uh, let's get straight to the episode. Welcome back, everybody, to the Other Canada Podcast. I am your host, Ono Sinde. Today is a special day. We have a great guest here with us today, Jen Winter, founder of Have a Nice Day Pilates. You know, we're going to talk everything about Pilates, your business, your rise to success, quitting your job during the pandemic, and uh, all that good stuff. But, you know, before getting into that, right, we got to understand, like, the background of what led you to actually taking Pilates. And you have a major background in dance, right? So when did your dance journey start? And um, from then on, like, what led you to starting Pilates? Yeah. Um, So I began ballet at a very, very young age Mm -hmm. here in in Toronto. Um, And I just kind of fell into it. I was a very active kid. So even sports, you know, swimming, gymnastics, Mm -hmm. all that stuff. But ballet, I really, really fell into it very quickly. Um, And it was, yeah, it was part of my life. And I was dancing about, you know, almost every single day. Um, And I got good. I got good. Well, you were elite elite. (laughs) I was good. (laughs) I was really good. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I went to a a Russian ballet school. I was the only black student there. And Mm -hmm. um, even though I I felt that I I stood out, you know, my mom kept saying like, hey, like, this is, you got something. Like, you belong here. Yeah. And like, you should, you should Mm -hmm. continue this education. So, um, yeah, I, I got accepted into the Alvin Ailey uh, dance program in New York City. Um, and what age and is this, by the way? Yeah, so that was after high school. So that would have been, um, yeah, I was 17, 18, 18, yeah. 18 years old, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and prior to that, um, uh, I got accepted into the Juilliard uh, dance program as well at the age mm-hmm. of 15, and I was the youngest Canadian that year as well to get wow. accepted. Uh, there were only two Canadians myself and another dancer from Montreal that got accepted that year. Okay. Take a little pause for the cause. Pause for the cause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I was the youngest Canadian at the time uh, to get accepted to that Juilliard summer dance program um, in New York and I was 15. Um, and then, uh, after high school, I, uh, yeah, I got accepted into the Alvin Ailey, uh, dance program in New York city. Um, and we were dancing, I mean, five, six, seven hours a day. Like you guys, like, like, from you guys are training like pros. Yes. Yeah. Um, and to help counter that, um, we also had Pilates, um, as, uh, a strengthening and mobility, uh, tool just to help. Um, balance us out because we were so exhausted and Pilates um, is an excellent uh, movement form um, to help build stability um, you know prevent injury um, and and find uh, stretch uh, throughout all all of our dance um, courses throughout that day so I was first introduced to Pilates um, at at Alvin Ailey and I was doing that once a week amazing Mm -hmm. so one of the key things that you mentioned was that on a you know first tackle part where you're talking about your your career early on Mm -hmm. is you're one of the only few black girls in the class yeah like actually partaking in this and one of the core things about doing ballet you'll never find people of color Mm -hmm. in there Mm -hmm. so at what point did you really get comfortable with yourself partaking in this and actually Mm -hmm. just you know what this is who i am i don't care if i get out there and i'm the only person of color Mm -hmm. each and every single time what point did you really like you know what this is who i am and i'm self-conscious about myself for being in this space yeah you know what I think I always just had it I was mm-hmm. always I never looked back and um I loved it so much that um 
yeah, it was my life. It was my passion. But I guess when I first got accepted into into Alvin Ailey yeah. uh, and walking through those, you know, pearly gates and you just see all of these black dancers mm-hmm. and I felt, I felt seen, I felt heard. I felt and accepted. I, exactly. Yeah. And I could just be myself um, and not have to, you know, manipulate my way to, to fit into mm-hmm. a certain stereotype or, or place. Yes. So I felt, um, I felt really good and safe there. And Alvin Ailey, that's a pretty prestigious yeah. program too, right? It was founded by a black man, correct? Correct. Did you, and what, and this was, uh, what year was it founded? Oh, good question. This was like way back, way back way in the back. day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. as a black man founding like a dance company mm-hmm. at that time. Yes. Must have been, you know, in, you need to dream big and you need to be bold. So for him to do such a thing back in the day and exactly. actually establish this pedigree of a program yeah. is pretty pretty amazing in my opinion exactly and he was also pushing you know storytelling Mm -hmm. of 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 ancestors and of 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 who we are as as people and that was also a first Mm -hmm. and doing it in such a bold way and um i was so drawn to that storytelling and i wanted to be a part of that fabric so um yeah when i got accepted it was it was a super big deal for me Mm -hmm. yeah so you're training each and every single Mm day um it's a rigorous aspect on your body, like yeah. your limbs and everything. When did you realize, you know what, Pilates is actually my thing now mm-hmm. and dance might not be that thing I'm doing every single day? Yeah. It's interesting because with Pilates, you know, you're you're forced to really slow down and almost zoom into that particular exercise or that particular muscle group. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the first time, you know, when I realized like, the mechanics of, of movement and the functionality of movement. Um, and I was always so interested in like the science behind movement. Um, and so, yeah, after kind of, I moved on from my, my dance career, um, you know, I was still going to, to Pilates on a weekly basis as like my own like self care Mm -hmm. (laughs) routine. Um, and, I just became obsessed with it and I wanted to understand a lot more of of the form and and why I feel so good after I take this this particular class and this yeah. way of, of, of moving. Um, so then I got a couple of of uh, certifications and I was like, maybe I'll just maybe I'll just teach this mm-hmm. thing. It just felt like a natural progression totally. into actually being certified, yes, teaching and everything like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because, you know, movement is my language, mm-hmm. um, why not know get deeper in that education and and i did yeah Mm -hmm. you know one of the core things that when we look at pilates Mm -hmm. when we look at yoga yep it's so hard to distinguish what is pilates Mm -hmm. right and we're talking behind camera and i was i was saying when i searched up pilates i'm seeing these crazy apparatuses it looks like a jungle gym and it looks like you're doing crazy different acrobatic moves on these different machines yeah um how would you describe Pilates? Mm-hmm. Like, what is Pilates at its functionality? Yeah, I think I like to say that Pilates is an internal conversation mm-hmm. um, with low impact, high repetition movements. Mm-hmm. Um, yoga, you know, is a bit more of a spiritual journey, and Pilates is a bit more about function yeah. uh, and mobility and strength work. Um, and, you know, and again, to go back to my point of you have to slow down, you have to connect, sync up breath with movement. And once you kind of like get that, get that, that flow, key, yes, it's like it's game over mm-hmm. and you're flowing, um, you know, within your breath work, within that particular exercise. And you're really almost like living out that exercise to the fullest. Yeah. And we love to say, you know, like less is more. Um, and once you almost, you know, surrender to the exercise and 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 you know think about the the function at 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 hand it's 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 life changing and for me truly it was you know Mm -hmm. i had ankle and i you know ankle injuries knee injuries from ballet and just all that rigorous work but um, i've always come back to pilates to help with my yeah just to help keep me in check keep you in check yeah eh? it's funny you bring up uh flow because i was actually having this conversation with my friend the other day and like we talk about you know, when you're actually starting a task yeah. and you want to get into that flow state of mind, mm-hmm. it's like you start it, you like, it's like hand, let's say hand, like hand to keyboard, 
mind and everything connected and you just throw, you yield yourself to the activity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you find like um, Pilates has actually allowed you to get into deep work mm -hmm. easier just because you know how to yield to the actual activity and actually just throw yourself in and just flows into it. Totally. Yeah. And we also touch a lot on, you know, after a Pilates class, you feel so relaxed mm -hmm. and, um, because there's so much focus at hand, because you're hyper aware of, of what is happening in that very moment, um, it it really kind of brings this energy of of, of calm, of being grounded, mm -hmm. and um, therefore that one exercise, you know, you're living it to the fullest. Yeah. Um, and therefore you're building up this sustainable strength. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me, that's, that's what it's about. I'm a big advocate for slow wellness. You know, it doesn't have to be even just moving for the sake of movement mm -hmm. is, is, is what I love to talk about because it doesn't always have to be a goal. Yeah. It can just be movement for the sake of movement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you were traveling, you were living in different countries. You were in New York, mm -hmm. went to the UK, yeah. Sweden, yeah. come back to Toronto. Yes. And you start working in Toronto just because you've got to start paying the bills. Yes, exactly. Where were you working? Yeah, so I was working at Soul Pepper Theatre Company. So I was okay. still within the performing arts space, space, um, but just like the back end of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I was there and it was great. I got to see, you know, all these plays every single week and it was fantastic. But um, it wasn't me. Mm. It wasn't me. Being behind a desk wasn't me. You're just chilling your dormant. Yeah, and yeah. like... I was bad. Like I, like, I didn't do a good <laughs> job, like, straight up. Like, I just, I wasn't present. Yes. I didn't want to be there. Of yeah. course, I had to be there. I had to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't my my calling. You, mm -hmm. know? you just felt disconnected from what 100%. you're doing. Yeah. And especially doing something like Pilates where you got to be connected all yes. the time. And then being taken out of your element. Yeah. It can be frustrating on your body and mind, too. Totally. Yeah. And as someone who, again, you know, moves for a living, mm -hmm. um, being behind a desk was really challenging so which year is this you started as soul pepper yes yeah, so that was 2019 2019 yeah and we know what happened 2019 shortly do, after pandemic do. time baby you know what yeah. i mean right so yeah. you're working behind the desk at soul pepper mm -hmm. then pandemic mm -hmm. happens now you're working from home mm -hmm. now you're working from home doing the same thing yeah and i think this bothered everybody like blurring home and Ooh. work right you're sharing the same space exactly. so at what point did you realize, like, you know what, this ain't for me. I mm -hmm. got to do something else. It was that. It was being at home and kind of, like, looking out my window and, like, thinking about, well, is this it? Like, mm -hmm. is this what I'm doing? Am I happy? And <clears throat> and I just started to make some lists of, like, what could be a potential next step. You know, what uh, what has been sitting like in the back shelf of in my mind exactly. Yeah. And, and how can I tap into that? And I just began to just write down some things and, you know, mood boards and all that stuff on Pinterest. And, um, and it just became crystal clear that I still had this almost like a fantasy of like, Oh, it'd be so dope if I, just, if I had my own Pilates studio and this is what I wanted to do for so long. Um, now I have the time and the bandwidth to just kind of like live it out in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I started to do was to just map it out. What could be my space and how mm -hmm. could I execute that? Mm -hmm. So did this start in the pandemic mm -hmm. when you started just scheming just for, about yeah. this? Scheming. Just casually just talking to hubby and saying, you know yeah. what, babe, like I think I might want to do this. Oh, yeah. How okay. was his like? Well, that's just it. Not yeah. just my husband, but like friends, mm -hmm. family. And it became a point where they're like, Bro, you need to, <laughs> either you're going to do it or you're not, because yeah. I kept talking about it all the time. Um, and I think at that point, it was like the fear of, uh, you know, not doing it was starting to eat me alive. Um, so friends, family, super supportive, but they're like, all right, what's the plan? Yeah. How are you going to do this? Yeah. Um, and that's when I started to do a bit of a, yeah, a deeper dive. Yeah, you know what's crazy too, right? Like mm -hmm. when you actually take that leap of faith mm -hmm. into something that you actually have a strong conviction in, mm -hmm. it seems just like the world just gravitates towards yeah. making your desire a possibility. Yes. And I always tell people that like if you actually have an idea or if you believe and you have a strong conviction like this is what I'm supposed to do, yeah. 
you should do it. Yeah. Even though you don't know what it's going to be. Yes. But there's actually a reason why you actually have this intuition. There's this quote um, where it says, you know, prayer is you telephoning to God and intuition is mm-hmm. go telephone God telephoning back to you. Mm. So if you actually don't listen to that intuition, it's you're actually denying yourself blessings mm-hmm. that are supposed to be coming to you. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. really interesting. And yeah. when I get um, even just like DMs from other entrepreneurs of like, how did you do this? Like how? Mm. And I always say, you know, it it's hard to almost like turn off you know, all of those signals or to kind of shut out like all of those like universal signs. Cause for me, it was crystal clear. I saw it exactly. I, and how I was going to get there, who knows, no idea. but I saw the vision crystal, crystal Mm -hmm. clear. And I knew that I had to chase it from that Mm -hmm. point. And you like, you didn't leave yourself like any place of like turning back. You know what? Like I might have this as a safety net. Well, it's the safety net. It's that safety net where you don't take that chance, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, it's almost like if you know that you have a safety net, are you going to jump? Mm-hmm. So for me, and I will say I was in a privileged place because my husband also was was working. So we right. had that that steady income at home. But um, the safety net of like, here goes everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, let me quit my job. Let me just see what happens right here, right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a story um, in a book by, what's his name? He wrote 40 Laws of Power. Okay. But in one of his books, he has this concept of sink the ship, mm-hmm. right? And he tells a story about the Aztecs mm-hmm. when they wanted to take over uh, Mexico. Mm-hmm. So one of, the, one of the individuals, his name was Cortez, he wanted to become a ruler. Okay. So what he did is, like, they were going over to Mexico with, like, all the other... He had 500 men with him. Mm-hmm. And along the way, he realizes that, you know what, for us to beat the Aztecs, Mm -hmm. we can't give ourselves a path of returning back. Right. So they get to a spot. He decides to sink the ships, Mm -hmm. right? All the other men wake up and they're like thinking like, what happened to our ships? Like, what's going on? What's going on? One of the two guys actually, like they keen on on him, like, you know what, this guy actually did this on purpose. They confront him. He says, yeah, I actually sunk the ships because I did not want to give us a path of returning back home. Right. Whatever we had, all that stuff we had, we cannot yeah. We cannot give ourselves a plan B. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens. It's like we either die or yeah. we see our dreams come true. Yeah. So they go over to, to Mexico. They beat the Aztecs. They outnumbered them. Mm-hmm. And now they took over Mexico. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what people need to have, right? Mm-hmm. You need to really have a path of no plan B. I'm going to make yeah. this happen. If you really believe that like, you can win. If you truly believe. And that, that, that belief really yeah. takes you far. And also, exactly, that's a great story. But And, and also, it's, it's you know, if you believe in it, you know, it's almost like you don't want to fail. And therefore, the, the path to succeed is, is again, it's just, mm-hmm. it's just green lights. It's because green light. you have the willingness to, to do what it takes. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, there were green lights uh, at the beginning, but then of course, of course. <laughs> of course reality kicked in. Yeah. But you know what? I gotta say, you you have to be like a little. Naive. You have to be crazy. Yeah, you yeah. gotta be pretty like, and it was such a ridiculous decision to yeah. open up a, a, a Pilates studio movement group fitness in a pandemic. Mm-hmm. But again, th- it was I could see it so clearly, and it had to be done. It mm-hmm. had to be done. So when you quit your job, did you give them like a two-week notice or you just woke up one day, you know what, I'm done? Um, there were some conversations. There's some conversations. There some con- and they were great about it. And mm-hmm. I told them, you know, what mm-hmm. I wanted to do. And they were, they were really, really supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, it was g- gradual, but then it, yeah, it was a pretty quick, mm-hmm. quick process. Yeah. So you make the decision. I'm mm-hmm. open up Pilates studio. Yeah. What are you doing to actually make this happen? Like soon as you made that decision that, I am following mm-hmm. this path by any means necessary. Yeah. So the first step was, uh, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> we got to find a, a place yep. and we need to get some sort of uh, funding. So um, I, the first step, um, I applied for um, a couple of, of loans um, and um, started to map out the business plan. Mm-hmm. It was really hard to do because, again, at that time, we were it was at the beginning of the pandemic and no one knew like what was up, yeah. what was down. Um, but once I found a spot, um, I then was like, yep. This is it. This is, this is it. 
And it all kind of like fell, I, I will say it did kind of fall into place from there. And I had like, you know, my daily tasks, schools, lists. Um, but um, once I found that that uh, commercial space on, mm-hmm. on King East, um, the vision started to come to life and um, yeah, secured some some loans and then started the, the renovation. Mm. So the renovation part is interesting mm-hmm. because one of the key aspects of your studio is like you really eliminated a part a, a lot of mm-hmm. the thrills that you'll see in different studios right yeah you eliminated like the i mean there are no the, mirrors there's no mirrors yeah i the I've, stimulant stuff that you'd be getting that's a great, when you go over to like a, a gym or something exactly like yeah. and so for me i for me i really wanted it to be bare bones you know a raw space in that folks had this space where mm-hmm. they could unload un, uh unload their uh, nine to five um, because if you have distractions like mirrors or even just like words that are like live life, life I mean, live life, life. It, it's, <laughs> that's fine. But for me, it's like, how can we just like get out of here for a second? Yes. So, um, my intent was, you know, I had this idea of like folks hanging up their nine to five at the door and almost like walking into this, this cloud like space where they could just return to, to oneself mm-hmm. and return to their breath. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very, very shipped back. There's like little, t- <laughs> there's like, yeah, not a lot of stuff going on in there, but that was, that was done with, mm-hmm. um, with, with intent. Um, and, uh, yeah. And even so far, the feedback from that has been awesome because mm-hmm. yeah, mirrors can be so distracting. And then, you know, you start to compare yourself with your neighbor and it really is just about that again, internal yeah. conversation. And you know, sometimes when you look at yourself in the mm-hmm. mirror, like, I mean, you can, you think you look good, but then you see yourself doing like a movement and you're like, whoa, I'm doing, that's how I look. And then you get self-conscious yeah. and you think everyone's looking at me like exactly. that. Exactly. It's, 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 it's distracting. Yeah. So I really wanted to create a space that honestly, that didn't even really feel like a Pilates mm-hmm. wellness studio. I just wanted it to be an inviting cloud-like space. And that's mm. what we came up with. And you know, we had no builders. It was myself and uh, my husband and my, my two friends are also, um, they're in production and we just Googled just some got, stuff. Got yeah. To work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were there. You know, yeah. Yeah, but we uh, made it work. Yeah. yeah. How did you get to the name Have a Nice Day? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that question a lot. It, um, yeah, it was important for me to create um, a brand um, that, made people smile as cheesy as that sounds i wanted folks to be able to say something that in turn gave them a little bit of like ah oh, mm-hmm. that's nice mm-hmm. um some delight some delight and yeah. it's not like have a perfect day it's not have the best day it's just like have a nice day keep it chill we do what we can no pressure i just wanted to take that pressure off of of having to you know, visit a studio of like, I have to be my best self and I have to da da da. So for me, it was just keeping it open to interpretation and mm-hmm. um, returning back to, to just that slow, slow wellness, yeah. that chill wellness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as you're opening it up during the pandemic, mm-hmm. how did you actually start cultivating business for the studio? Yeah, it's really interesting because when we opened, um, all of our classes were on Zoom. Mm-hmm. So we couldn't have in studio classes and that was really interesting because how do you how do you build community on zoom yeah those zoom and, and that zoom life is actually yeah and when no one no one's heard of you no mm-hmm. one knows who you are um but i just honestly i just started to just push our stuff out there and i hired some incredible instructors as well um and they're within the industry too and um we just started to to just teach these zoom classes mm. live classes um and my instructors were doing it from their home you yeah. know and i was doing it from the studio and just word of mouth and organically it, it just kind of that's where it started of like mm-hmm. oh i i found this actually this really really dope online class um and they have you know weekly uh, daily classes um and that's how it kind of built built up from there yeah and you know that's interesting because it feels like it just snowballed over time right like mm-hmm. during that period yeah what is it about the have a nice day brand Mm -hmm. in your opinion do you think resonated with people to take that leap of faith and actually trying your classes yeah i think number one just just seeing a black woman doing pilates is we we don't it's refreshing yeah it's really refreshing it's refreshing yes yeah um and you know for for me the 
one of our main pillars and our connective tissue of this brand is is without a doubt inclusivity. Yeah. Um, and you know, making sure when we're talking about movements, bodies in motion, um, our our language is is, is on point, mm-hmm. and we're making sure that we can make this movement form as accessible as possible. So, I think people were drawn to the fact that um, it's judgment free. Um, and drawn to the fact of, of just seeing, you know, BIPOC folks, um, you know, in, in motion, Mm -hmm. especially doing Pilates was just something like, Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, you know, even just with the brand of, you know, we have this like cosmic (laughs) thing going on and, and, and again, just allowing folks to create that space with, and I say like their universe within their 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 headspace and uh, to really like dive into what they need mm-hmm. for that day. Yeah. Um. So it's very very like, do you? Mm-hmm. Our brand is do you? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's starting to hit home with people. Yeah. yeah. Even like gym life and at certain studios and some studios, you know, they tell you how you should feel. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. Yeah. And that's what I noticed about your brand too. Like when yeah. I was on your Instagram page, it feels like, Ash. The vibe I guess. Let's see. You're like um. I know clouds, it's like air. Yeah. But I feel like I'm resting in clouds. Like That's when excellent. I actually throw myself in there, I just mm-hmm. feel like I'm just going to go with the flow. Totally. I'm just going to be with myself and actually just go with where the That's movement it. is going. That's and it. it's crazy how you've been able to replicate this even in a digital space Thank too. You. Yeah, right? it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Right? And the branding, I was actually talking about branding like yesterday. Your brand is what people say about you, mm-hmm. right? It's not about what you say your brand is, but it's how people communicate to you back like yeah. you know when you talk about an iphone or you talk about a dell computer yeah completely different feeling mm-hmm. right so that's pretty awesome yeah. yeah and that was a big piece for me was setting the stage of a clear 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 brand mm-hmm. and when you think about nice day you think about her on demand in studio offerings yeah it's a clear picture exactly um and that was it. i i wanted the, you know i wanted to stick out like a sore thumb like that was the point mm-hmm. um and we still are and we're still kind of you know having these, I say, big ideas with no budget, yeah. <laughs> but, we're, but we're making it work, right? Yeah, you're scrappy and you make it happen. Exactly, yeah. exactly. How's it been like seeing the wave of women of color join your studio and actually part- participating in Pilates? Because that's very rare. Mm-hmm. If you go to other Pilates studios, you mm-hmm. will really see that. Yeah. Yeah, so how's it like been for you receiving that kind of feedback? Yeah, it's been, it's been really wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, you know, we still have a ways to go, and mm. and I mean, even when folks, you know, you know, come to the studio for the first time, and there's still that hesitation of like, like it, like it's Pilates, like, am I gonna? Um, and of course, then they're met with, you know, open doors, open arms. Yeah. Um, but it's been it's been remarkable because I didn't have that when I was, you know, um, taking Pilates around the city or even parts of New York, and it just. It was always me. It was always me and at the back and didn't really feel seen or heard. Um, and so to now s- have this space and, you know, and to be Toronto's first black-owned Pilates studio is is huge. Mm-hmm. And I will say, like, lots of pressure. Like, I don't want to mess this up. So there are days when I, I yeah, it's, I, I hope that I'm doing all that I can. As yeah. I say, right, pressure makes diamonds. Hey. You know what I'm saying, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So walk me through the business model Mm -hmm. because that's pretty interesting. Yep. You're doing the classes Mm -hmm. for how long online before shifting to Well, yeah, we were on Zoom, oh my gosh, for like half a a year. Half a year, Half a year. Does it get uh, taxing on yourself just like dealing with the Mm -hmm. technical aspects of Zoom, Mm -hmm. internet, Mm -hmm. all that connection? Exactly. Well, that's just it because, and as someone, you know, I'm very... I love socializing. I love, you know, you love the meeting camaraderie. with you. I, right, and exactly. community is it for me. But having the, that, you know, computer screen and then you have like a mic and it was, it's not the same vibe it, it, at all. It doesn't feel very Pilates-y. <laughs> but, you know, and like we were doing our best, but for me I was like, this isn't it, this mm-hmm. isn't it. So it was really, it was tough, but also it was the gig and I just, and I just, I was there every single day just like making it work. Um <clears throat> But, um, yeah, even for, uh, it was last year for Black History Month, um, myself and another uh, friend of mine, Eddie, we came together and developed um, 
30, uh, 30 black influencers and um, uh, facilitators um, coming together to create 30 days of, of, of movement mm -hmm. um, virtual mm -hmm. uh, in the month of February. Um, and every single day we had a new kind of offering online yeah. on Zoom. And even though it was, it was taxing, you know, we were still pushing out mm -hmm. us and yeah. folks could still have access to us. And yeah. that was a really, really big piece. Um, but yeah, around, around February, March, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And then luckily we got to open up our doors yeah, properly. And limited capacity too. Like when, uh, you know, like the lockdown, like, okay, you can only have this many people. So at least four people. Four people. So how's the vibe like with four people in there? Like, like it was, it was weird. It's like, weird? yeah, because you know, we, the, and the folks who did come and who are still with us, like we love them and we just wanted to get them more and we wanted them to get the essence mm -hmm. and of, you know, who we are as a, as a brand. Um, but, but slowly, but surely like we, we, we got there in yeah. the end, you know, and then, so, you know, we stopped our zoom classes and we finally, you know, got to live out the, the true model of like being in a studio and having mm -hmm. these like group classes in and out. Um, but then I realized, you know, like Light Bob, you know, had so many people joining us on Zoom, you know, from South Africa to London to Antigua to all over. And I was like, oh, okay, this is this is a really, really big piece. Um, and that's when we decided to, you know, really come together. And I put my, my uh, yeah, all of my eggs in one basket. And I was like, how do we develop, you know, a dope on-demand platform? Yeah. And that's when we developed Planet Nice Day. I say mm -hmm. we, but yes, yes, I did. Yes. So when did you launch Planet Nice Day? So that was in the summer. That was June, end of June, July. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of this year. Of this year. Mm -hmm. And what percentage of your revenue comes from this on-demand platform? Yeah, so right now we're at like 30%, mm -hmm. which is like pretty, like it's great. Yeah. I mean, I and I would like to get to a point where 100% is actually. Really? I, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, the sky's the limit with, with on-demand. You mm -hmm. can reach so many people. And it's also like a much more accessible price point, you know? And, um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what is the future of, of Have a Nice Day Pilates because um, now having our on-demand platform, it's been, yeah, it's been such a, interesting journey to like yeah. kind of map out the people who are joining us from all around the world. And that's actually pretty innovative that you're doing that because if you look at all the great businesses that exist today, mm -hmm. they're not really in the business of actually selling you the product. Mm -hmm. They're actually in the business of selling you back your time. Mm -hmm. If you look at Uber, Airbnb, right? They're not selling you the aspect of, Hey, like wait for a cab outside mm -hmm. for 20 minutes. It's like, We'll be chilling right here. I'm going to press this button. I can mm. chat you up. And by the time I get downstairs, I know exactly. that class is available or I know that room is available and it's going to look the way I want it because exactly. it's protected. Every great business is like selling you back your time mm -hmm. in one way or another. And I think that's what you're doing with the Pilates, right? Because I'd have to go outside. I'd have to get dressed up. I'd have yeah. to go take a subway or a streetcar yeah. and be there. I mean, some people do love that, but and that's, that's, that's great. great. Yeah. But there needs to be like a great offering that, I still get that same feeling, mm -hmm. but from my own space. That's what it is. Yeah. You know, we say like, you should be able to roll out of bed and then, you know, drop into one of our classes. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's about. And, you know, not everyone can attend our in-studio classes and not everyone can attend, you know, to Corktown, King East. And um, so it's so important to be able to offer um, all of our classes um, at that, you know, high, 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 high end um, through through our digital platform. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like what Peloton's doing too. Yep. I've done it. I've done a couple of their classes. Yeah. I love their their instructors. It's like they, they also have their own personal brand yes. too. And so you come like, oh yeah, like this is that person. Exactly. It's so energetic and everything like that. Um, what's the capacity of uh, have a nice day uh, mm. like studio? Like yeah. how many people can you actually have in there? Exactly. Yeah. So we're a boutique size. So we have ten, mm -hmm. ten folks per class, um, and. And I, you know, and like, we're pushing that. Like I'll even say like, we are pushing that. And I think we've reached kind of, we're starting to burst at the seams a little bit with our in-studio space. Um, but yeah, 10, 10 per class versus on demand. It's sky's the limit, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And how's like your membership grown since uh, mm, inception? So amazing. So amazing. Eh? So amazing. Yeah. yeah. And 
And I think also what's what's helping us out is is having our, our digital platform because you know folks are being introduced with in studio and our uh, digital offerings, um, and we are you know slowly now having programming for twenty twenty three, and with that getting in um, you know a bunch of incredible facilitators and. Um, so for me, it's like every month I want to have something going on in our studio space. And it's not just about Pilates, right? It's, it's self-care like as a spectrum, like as a whole, because, um, you know, mental health, super important. And, you know, they all go hand in hand. So um, it's been dope to have just a community now. And like yeah. we have regular, like regulars, like that's, come on. It becomes like from, family too. Right, and like from opening up in a pandemic to see like regulars is it means the world because we're doing something right. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's been really incredible and that's given me the, yeah, the okay to to continue this and to kind of push the envelope even Mm -hmm. more with with the business. So walk me through like the day-to-day of have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have like classes like every hour Mm -hmm. or how does it work? Because if you can have 10 people, you must have like time blocks for. Yeah, exactly. And how are those time blocks being filled? Yeah. So we have classes uh, every day, normally uh, morning, lunch and like evening time. Um, It was a pretty light schedule for this year because we just wanted to survive full stop. Um, And now all of our classes are waitlisted. So for next year, we will be adding other like five classes Mm -hmm. um but yeah usually it's a morning class um followed by privates in between uh lunch class and then evening class as well um i'm there pretty much almost every day um we have five other incredible instructors who are there also helping and supporting and just like really pushing the brand um and uh yeah, we launch a new video um, on our on demand every single week, mm-hmm. um, and it's just been keeping that consistency really. And um, yeah, I think for us right now in the in the winter time, we notice that like our evening classes are the ones that are the most popular. Winter time right? by winter. Hello, <laughs> versus like in the summer, you know, our yeah. seven AMs are like so 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 fully booked. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's a very seasonal thing, like. Mm-hmm. And so we're trying to understand what what that means to us and to our community and how we can just help support. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have, for example, um, we just had a BIPOC career empowerment workshop with one of the most incredible career coaches, uh, Chi Chi. Um, And then this Saturday we have um, a sound therapy event as well as meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, So just offering support um, for our community throughout these these darker months is really important. Yeah, so you're offering like a wide array, array of different exactly. things just to help you elevate your spirit mm-hmm. and you, you know about not be moving but mm-hmm. just like getting your mindset right is equally exactly. as important as your body exactly. right exactly yeah exactly so when you really look at it um the on-demand platform seems like it's growing mm-hmm. it's from my, from where i'm looking at it, it seems like you're going to the tech side more than anything mm-hmm. right you, like have a nice day has become like a tech platform mm-hmm. so does that mean that you're not going to have another have a nice day studio mm-hmm. or What are your future ambitions when you look at it? Yeah, it would be great to have both, obviously. Um, I think next year will give us an indication as to where we want to go. You know, we're already coming towards the end of our lease. That that ends in October of of next year. Um, So a lot of big decisions. I'm definitely super interested and inspired within the tech world um, and kind of pushing planet nice day even further within that like vr space um so that could be really really interesting um but i i think yeah there's there's always going to be uh you know an individual who wants in studio and who wants you know at home digital uh, offerings so i think this year will tell us that direction of, of where we where we're headed um but on a personal note like the tech side of things has me super, super inspired, super inspired. Yeah. Um, and it offers a lot more space to, you know, work with other mm-hmm. um, facilitators. And, you know, we want to bring in um, a meditation coach for the next Planet Nice Day. We want to have, like, walking meditation uh, classes, a podcast. Yeah. Like, sky's the limit, right? And with, with virtual and digital um, offerings. So we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know just yet. 
the sky i mean you're only limited to your imagination yeah. right now right yeah but I, I do see an opportunity there for actually expanding the tech space just because oh, totally. you can actually expedite your vision super quick that's exactly it. right and actually have more people around the world getting a touch of the of the whole brand that's overall it. yeah um one thing I also want to touch upon is the funding aspect of mm-hmm. it. I know, you know, we're on the, you know, Face podcast right yeah. now, the other Canada. How has Face been able to support you throughout this journey? Yeah, so I received uh, a loan um, from Face and from BDC. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got to say, like, I didn't think that I was going to get it because usually as <laughs> loans go, you apply, <laughs> you, like, pour your heart and soul mm-hmm. out on this application and, like, diddly squat, right? Yep. Nothing comes back. Um, but that wasn't the case for, for this. And, um, yeah, I, I got in touch with, with face and, um, the process kind of began, um, from there. And it was, it was, uh, it was pretty seamless. Yeah, and yeah. for the first time I was like, do I have a, sh- like, do I, do I, my black business, do I have a shot at this? Okay, maybe. Mm. Um, and I applied, uh, and I got, I got a loan from both BDC and from face and, um, I got to say that it's that cushion that is helping mm-hmm. tremendously yep. right now. Yeah. Um, so it's forever grateful and, and, um, I felt their support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause when you look at like the loan application process, it's yeah. like sometimes they need to see some traction. No. How did you sell them on the vision even before yeah. business was really booming to actually justify the fundamentals of actually yeah. giving you the loan? Yeah. How was that like? And I actually applied for the loan um, a few months after, mm-hmm. like I, I opened up the business because I wanted to have that, well, that proof, the tangible, that, that proof, proof, of proof of concept, exactly. exactly yeah. um, and for me, you know, and one of the big things that I want to have with, um, or to kind of like use the loan for, is marketing, of course, mm-hmm. but also developing, mm-hmm. you know, which hopefully could be an app one day, Planet Nice Day. Exactly. So, I just you know, laid out for them, you know, what we could do with it and, you know, where all these ideas could potentially lead to. Um, So I built out this, yeah, pretty, yeah, (laughs) extensive, elaborate plan. plan. Um, And I just, yeah, I I put it out there and I was like, well, let's let's see, this is a plan, right? And again, Mm -hmm. sky's the limit, right? Um, And uh, yeah, I guess it was, it was a successful, yeah. How how did it feel once you... Found out that you got accepted. So happy. Yeah. Was, and it was the day before I was leaving for my wedding. So I was just like, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, super happy. And I felt, you know, there was a bit of, yeah, that reinforcement mm-hmm. and that proof of concept. And uh, I felt that, you know, someone understood. And they could they see it. it. And they got it. Yeah. Um, and that was huge. Yeah. It helps to have people working for you because when you actually go apply to these places for Mm -hmm. funding and a loan right the person who's actually looking at the application they might not be from your community so they don't really get it right and we know how black entrepreneurs face to get funding getting through doors is a challenge so it feels like from when i look at it it was like the right place the right time the right opportunity and the right person behind that application to really get it Yes. Right. One, yeah. And I do got to just like shout out Jean, Jean, who works for Face. And um, she was helping me throughout this entire process. And mm-hmm. um, she was absolutely incredible and so patient and really helped um, just support me throughout this entire application mm-hmm. process. Yeah. Yeah. And are you opening up for new uh, other funding or how's that looking like right now? Or is the business self-funding itself? Um, almost. almost. Um, so I, yeah, <laughs> so there would be another year of like help. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think again, like in the spring, we'll have a bit more of an understanding of where we are. Um, um, but, um, in order to, yeah, to, to grow and to hopefully maybe get into an app space, we would need to, we would need the funding for sure. Amazing. For sure. Yeah. yeah. First of all, I just want to see how proud of you. I, I'm so proud of you. Oh. Just like hearing your story, taking you. that uh, leap of faith. When you look back mm-hmm. to actually quitting your job to where you're at now, would you do anything differently? Oh, big questions. Um, no, I no, no, no. cause it, it, no, it got me to this point and, um, 
And I think, you know, ripping off that Band-Aid, that was the only way forward. Had I, like, dwelled on it and, like, sat on it, and it just, it wouldn't have happened. So zero regrets. I did what I had to do, and and here I am. Mm. Yeah. And quitting your job takes Mm -hmm. guts. Yeah. Is there any point, did you feel that this might not work? Every day. Every day. today. (laughs) (laughs) I woke up and I was like, huh? Um, Every day. Every day, and, and again, lucky that I have um, a, a partner who, who also supports um, our household, but um, e- every day is, is I have that question, um, and, and, and yet I, I manage to make my way through that day, and something happens, I get a new client or whatever it is, um, but that fear, and it's a bit of imposter syndrome, of course, um, still, um, but it's a muscle, right, and Every day I'm getting better at, at, at this and, and, you know, being now, you know, the, the face of this business. And, um, but proof is in the pudding, as yeah. they say, and, and, you know, things are organically happening. And I'm just trying to remind myself of that and of the growth and of the journey. And that's been my, like, North Star is, like, mm-hmm. you're still here. Because mm-hmm. a lot of studios during the pandemic, they are not here. Mm-hmm. So just listening to that and following that. Yeah. And for those people who are listening right now, you know, the ones who want to start a project, Mm -hmm. open up a studio, start a business, quit their job. Yeah. uh, What would you advise those people who are thinking about starting something and leaving something they don't like to go do something else? Yeah. Um, Do it. Uh, Do do it. it. (laughs) Do it. Um, Do it. And you need to create a business plan though Mm -hmm. like you do you need to sit down you need to map out intentions goals all that stuff um because when you're in it there's almost no time to 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 think when you're in this like tornado cyclone of just opening up a business so you need to have some sort of foundation and that is your business plan and that's going to keep you anchored Mm -hmm. um and i think following your gut because to this day, I've been following my intuition and with the brand, and, and it's gotten me here. So listen to that. Um, and, yeah, and I think also, you know, converse with other entrepreneurs because you learn so much from them. And I always thought, it, and, and it is a lonely endeavor, um, but they're out there. And even, like, going to the, the FACE, um, you know, event uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, I met so many other black entrepreneurs, and I was reminded of, like, that, yes, we're, like, I'm not alone. And uh, you need that support. You need that You need that community. You need that community. community. Exactly. You can't be a lone wolf all the time. No. Yeah. Exactly. Um, But yeah, do it, have a business plan, and find your support system. Mm -hmm. And as we work towards wrapping up, like, where can people find you? Yes. Um, At Nice Day Pilates is (laughs) our Instagram handle. Uh, Our website is nicedaypilates.ca. You can find us on King Street. We're at 398 King Street East, King and Sackville in Corktown. And of course, our on-demand platform. You can move with us from home. um, And that's nicedaypilates.ca. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. This is the Other Canada Podcast. I am your host, Ono Sinde, and I was joined today by Jen Winter, the founder of Have a Nice Day Pilates. Jen, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Yes, likewise. Cool. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.